So, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Um, you know what? Uh, we have a Catholic Social Action teaching, Catholic Social Teaching Committee. Evita is a member of it. Um, the other uh, member is in the vestibule probably now helping people register to vote. You know, all of this is around uh, making sure people take the opportunity to vote. And, uh, you know, ironically, even Pope Francis said that recently as well. Um, but anyway, I want to kind of broaden the opportunity to give you an idea of what the Catholic Church in Brooklyn and Queens is doing. And, you know, the bishop maintains an office which we call external affairs. It's under the umbrella of what we call the sales media. The sales media is kind of a uh, an arm of the diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. And uh, so we, we wanted to invite somebody from that office. And Matthew was good enough to come. And he's going to give us an idea of how, as a Catholic church, we carry on our mission in a world that is a public and common world, but nevertheless, that necessitates our working with elected officials. You know, So there's a lot of different things that uh, Matthew and his his boss, um, Vinny, and um, another assistant right in the office. Uh, yeah, we have uh, Alexandra Caymans, but if if you ever go to uh, events of the diocese, some of the larger events, you will see we have a lot of uh, contractors and freelancers who work with us. So I'm sure you know, like you've seen Junior and people like that at those. So they don't um, act; they're not employed at um, the diocese or to sales in a traditional way. They just we just bring them on for all the events that we have to have. Right. So anyway, I'm going to let Matthew give you a sense of what he does. And uh, appreciate your time, Matthew. Without further ado, thank you, Bishop Sanchez. Um, so, like Becky was just saying, um, I, I work as the uh, deputy director of external affairs, and that falls under the Diocese of Brooklyn and the Sales Media Group. So, the Sales Media Group, for those who don't know, um, it's probably most famous for the tablet newspaper. And we have uh, Currents News, so on um, with uh, Net Net TV. So those are you know like oh, that company. Um, but we also, if anyone has uh, people in uh, you know uh, in the uh, uh, Catholic school system in Brooklyn and Queens, CTN, Catholic Tele Media Network, is housed out of there. Um, but a lot of the other things that we do uh, are uh, external affairs, which is myself and my boss Vincent and some other people. We, the press office. So if you see any. Uh, and people responding to reporters that that that's all housed there. So we do it's communications, technology, events. That, that's what we do. But I, I do need to point out that um, I started um, with the diocese. This is not going down. It should just go. Down. So I started with the diocese back in 2012, and one of the things that I was doing back then was uh, voter registration drives at uh, uh, churches in Brooklyn and Queens, mostly Brooklyn. And um, so as as uh, Bishop Sanchez said, it, it, that's going on right now. But a couple things that I used to say back then that I didn't think to put in the presentation, but now that we're talking about it. So you do need to register, um, even if you've just moved, if you were registered at your old address, you need to update that. It's, it's the same form. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So back when I was doing this in 2012, uh, we'd go to all these different um, churches. We'd, we'd have somebody uh, speak at the pulpit. I'd, I'd be at the back helping people, you know, with the forms and whatnot. But, you know, you would search certain places. You'd have two or three people fill out the form. Other areas, um, I mean, there was one, um, one parish in Greenpoint, right, with 35 people. Because a lot of... Uh, uh, Immigrants who become citizens, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just their, their time to uh, to fill that out. So, do you know what's going on? No. So, just so you know, uh, got here about 
uh, 40, 40 minutes ago and everything was going completely uh, fine with this. And then Lewis here had uh, tested all these other things out uh, a couple times this week, but then there were issues with this screen not being connected. So, so uh, of course uh, we have that, but um, I, I can just uh, talk over it. So with, with this uh, particular yeah, uh, slide, I uh, said, my boss, as uh, Bishop Sanchez uh, mentioned, Vincent Levy, and he was originally going to do this presentation, but had a realized he had a family obligation and a conflict. So external affairs, um, we are registered lobbyists for the diocese at the city, state, and federal levels. And that's necessary so that whenever, um, whenever an organization meets with an elected official, you have to have a lobbyist present because it has to be recorded in such a way for, um, you know, just transparency, uh, mostly on the side of the elected official, but, you know, th th that's how people get in trouble. And I actually have a lobbying training uh, Tuesday for this week. So something that we have to do all the time. Uh, so external affairs includes government affairs and public affairs. So public affairs, you know, government affairs, you know, is sort of obvious. Public affairs is more, um, you know, it, it can include uh, corporate, it just it, interactions with the, with the public in general. So include corporate or uh, local organizations, that sort of thing. And then uh, event planning and logistics. So uh, more and more over the years, uh, we've been at this, like I said, since 2012. Um, and with Bishop Brennan doing more and more mm -hmm. events compared with Bishop DiMarzio, uh, we wind up having to uh, handle uh, events for the diocese more and more and more and more. It used, it used to be maybe four or five a year and some of the bigger things like the ordinations. Like I think my, the first the first uh, ordination I actually handled was uh, somebody over there uh, back in 2012. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's why it's just, it, it's fitting that I'm here for this. So, um, but then also I have a, uh, just me personally, I also work uh, for, with the Cathedral Club of Brooklyn. So um, if you've ever been to any of those, it's the official uh, lay uh, organization for the diocese. So if you're ever at one of those events, I'm the guy they all thanked when they, uh, when they do their speeches. So, and then just the other uh Part of the role is law enforcement and emergency response. So when you do all of these uh, events, you have to let the NYPD know what's going on. And uh, if there are you know, international uh, implications, it also involves Secret Service. Um, but we've also had people from the NYPD and the FBI speak at pastors meetings. Uh, so that that's it's. All of those things, and, and that's one of the reasons why Bishop Sanchez wanted to make sure that it went over the, those, because if you hear external affairs, people, what's that? So that's what it is. It's not going, okay. All right, so some of the projects, just to be more specific, that we've worked on um, uh, for Vatican related, so the 2015 visit of Pope Francis. Uh, so we had to work with all the different law enforcement organizations with, uh, everything from the Secret Service down to the Port Authority Police, because, uh, you know, the Pope came into JFK. So whenever uh, the Pope uh, comes to the United States, whichever diocese the airport is in is the one that gets jurisdiction. So that's why it was the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens rather than, you know, the Archdiocese. So, um, and then uh, we hosted uh, Swiss Guards. They came earlier this year. Um, and it, it's just good to do that sort of thing for them because then when we have people go over to the Vatican on pilgrimages and whatnot, it's it's just good to maintain that sort of uh, contact. So it's you know it's still within the church overall, but it falls under external affairs. And then uh, uh, Blessed Carlo Acutis, um, an assumed to be saint, um, when his relic uh, has has come to, to the United States to, to tour. Um, we, we are the ones we work with uh, US Customs and TSA. And uh, just to make sure, because, you know, it's, you know, a relic is, you know, a part of what that person was. 
and there's no, you know, easy form, you know, for TSA where you're, you know, I'd like to declare, you know, the pericardium, you know, you can't, so you, you have to, you know, you have to explain what it is and, you know, you work with the contacts that you have. So, um, and then uh, like the, the recent Eucharistic events. So the Eucharistic revival that we had in April, I don't know if any of you happen to go to that. So uh, we were, we weren't originally heavily involved, but then uh, Father Javino uh, desperately needed help. And we uh, helped him uh, with uh, dealing with the USTA and uh, the, uh, the NYPD and everybody around there uh, with the whole ticketing system. So, uh, yeah, that, that was complicated. Um, and then we had the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage uh, in May, which was only about a month after the uh, the revival. And because the archdiocese doesn't have people who do what we do, um, we had to help the, the procession with the Bronx and Manhattan uh, parts. And uh, I think one of the, I think the, the, the best days was for, for me of that was when uh, uh, we had the the monstrance handed off uh, to Bishop Brennan on the Brooklyn Bridge, so if you, that was covered in uh, you know currents, the tablet, and lots of other things. So uh, yeah, so I was on the bridge, you know, at that time. So we we do all the, those sorts of things. So uh, and then actually we we do uh, the Eucharistic procession at St. Patrick's Cathedral. There's one every October, um, and the one in Manhattan. Uh, because, uh, again, they don't have, for whatever reason, the archdiocese doesn't have people who do what we do. And then uh, emergency response. So I, I was the disaster relief facilitator for the diocese after Hurricane Sandy. Um, so that involved visiting a lot of damaged schools and parishes. And uh, I was brought on for that because the year before with Hurricane Irene, the diocese got nothing from that. So they wanted to try something different and have somebody be responsible for liaising with FEMA. And uh, well, let's just say they got more than nothing uh, mm -hmm. for that. So that 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 helped a lot, is what I was told. So. And then just some um, external affairs projects that we used to work on that we don't do anymore, uh, just for whatever reason. So I just said the Go to registration drives at churches, but we also did them at high schools. So that, that was in uh, 2012 and 2016. Uh, Bishop DiMarzio used to have legislative breakfasts. We have uh, the Queen, one for Queens uh, officials at, at the Immaculate Conception Center, and uh, one for Brooklyn officials at uh, the diocesan offices at 310 uh, Prospect Park West. And the elected officials, they liked doing that. And you had, you know, it wasn't just the Catholic ones. A lot of them would come uh, just because it it was and it was the only opportunity that they would have on a regular basis where you would get people from not just both parties, but different levels of government all sitting together. So you'd have people from the House of Representatives, you'd have state senators, you'd have city council members, um, and they would all just be sitting and talking and, you know, having something slightly more robust than uh, the cookies. <laughs> but uh, no, it was, just, it was just a nice thing. But um, but that was what Bishop DeMarzio would do. Bishop Brennan is more about going out into the into the uh, diocese and uh, having you know, direct interactions with, with the you know, congregations. Uh, we also used to manage the March for Life buses. So uh, I think at some point that got transferred over to the diocese when they hired a few people and that was, just became you know, their responsibility. But there was one point, uh, it might've been 2015, where we, we had 20 buses coming from the diocese of Brooklyn down to DC for the day. Uh, for and I, for the, for the March for Life. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it was mid January and mm -hmm. it, I don't know if any of you have ever done it, but could not be colder because when you're when you're out there in the mall, it's you're not protected. So when the wind comes, it's just, yeah, but it, if if you can join and do it, it's it's uh, it's it's a special uh, thing. Uh, also added Net TV onto Verizon, and um, and we used to do the handle the lobbying for Catholic Migration Services, which like with the um, 
with what happened with uh, Hurricane Irene to Hurricane Sandy. That was something where they used to get nothing, and then now they get millions of dollars every year to help people all over Brooklyn and Queens. Um, so, how about the lobbying? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to re register for that every year? Yes, we have to register for that every year, and we have to do uh, reports. Mm -hmm. um, so every two months, you have to do for the city and state levels and every quarter for the federal. So there's only a few months a year where you're not working on a report that you have to hand it. So you have to you have to tell, even though it's three different agencies, because one for each of the different levels, um, you have to tell them uh, who did who did the work. So me or Vinny or both, how many hours. Uh, which elected officials you spoke with, either directly or their staff, and all the names, and what what it was about. So lobbying is um, two main um, types. So one is issue advocacy, uh, where you're just trying to persuade, and the other is procurement, where you're trying to get funding. So th those are the, the, the two things. But... Um, because we've been at this for so long, a lot of what happens is the elected officials will reach out to us um, for, for help on things. Uh, so we had something uh, just a, a few weeks ago um, where uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, he wanted, uh, they had that Congress on your corner event and they wanted to, to do that at the parking lot of um, St. Mary's Star of the Sea. Uh, and so we had to um, involve um, other arms of the diocese. So, so Rockland, because they handle the, the leases and whatnot. Because so when you're St. Mary's Star of the Sea is one of those places that used to have an active Catholic church, uh, Catholic school. Mm -hmm. That school closed years ago, but is now uh, run uh, by the city uh, for, a, for a, a charter school. So with the term, you know, you have to think about the terms of the lease. So it's like, even though the church owns that, we're not entitled to uh, allow anyone else to use what we've already given to somebody else to use. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they were they were able to do the event that they wanted to do, but they had to do it in the in the part the the church parking lot versus the school parking lot. So just all those little things that that. We wouldn't necessarily think would have to be, um, you know, or you know, sorted. Yes, yes. Now, what was the, what was the purpose that the representative wanted to use it for? Well, for okay, that, so um, good question. So, this was something that it was it's called Congress on Your Corner. It's just a program that he does where he does uh, services for his constituents. So in this case, it was just having a bunch of shredders so that people would be able to uh, clear up their documents. So uh, it, you know, just, just something like that. But we've had it before where um, people want to do you know, something like a voter registration or they want to connect people to their uh, to, to benefits so that they'll have uh, specialists uh, uh, from the city level and the state level um, who can um, guide people towards getting whatever benefits they might not realize that they're able to receive. And just uh, why that's a good question is that's distinguishing constituent services, which is what someone who's already elected uh, will want to do, versus a campaign where someone who's in office, like, like Hakeem Jeffries, um, you know, that he's a member of Congress, so they have to, they have to campaign every, every two years. We don't get involved in the campaign aspect of it because that uh, it, it's a, a thorny uh, area because uh, you don't want to risk uh, tax exempt status and also it, if if the church or you know this church or in any uh, starts doing something like that then you you change the nature of what the church is supposed to be in the community oh. so. Uh, so we, we were, were very careful on that. So w one way to do to interact with campaigns, though, is um, when somebody wants when when um, multiple candidates for the same office, like let's say in a primary, want to address uh, people like something like this. 
that you can do as long as, as long as you're inviting all of them to do it. Uh, similarly, if if it's if it's a general election and there's two main candidates, it's fine to allow one to speak, but you have to extend the invitation to the other. And you it has always been neutral, right? And you and it has to be the same sort of opportunity. So they don't have to they don't have to speak at you know exactly the same time or at exactly the same event. But if you're inviting one on the same weekend where you have some sort of parish festival and you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of people, and then the next week it's just a regular Sunday mass, that's not equal or equitable, and it, it can get you uh, in trouble because it's a favoritism. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I understand, obviously, about the church not endorsing candidates, but is there a difference when you when it comes to what's happening this election with this proposition that people are not really aware of what the implications are and how we could somehow get that word out or right so on that um with the proposition one uh so if we were doing that from a lobbying perspective that would fall under the issue advocacy or in this case um advocating against which is what uh the, the uh, New York State Catholic Conference has taken that, that position against us. Oh, sure. We're going to just try to get this in again. Again, this worked completely fine. So we started. Rebooting oh, that's what he just did. Yes. Um, so on that, um, there were usually. Uh, Nonprofit advocacy groups that are uh, specifically uh, uh, mobilized to work on something like that. So for this one, I think it was the, it's the committee to protect children or something. Something it was something of of, of that nature, um, and and uh, they're the ones handling that for um, uh, the state really, and so they they provided. Um, all this this documentation that was uh, give, given out by the vicar general's office to all the the, the parishes, mm -hmm. I, I think they had actually offered to send printed materials, but it just it would have been too complicated. When you do something like that, um, you, you're going to wind up having a lot of shipping costs and all that. So it was just easier just to send the the, the digital. I guess everybody. my my position is it's sort of like preaching to the choir to us because we're more aware and involved with it, but it's just, it's frustrating that we can't get that message out to the right. broader public in general because they don't understand what that's really saying. And if you read the actual proposition, it doesn't mention right. any of the things it of, like a of thing. the implications yeah. of it. So that, that's, yeah. that's one of the reasons why, yeah, where we do have to get that sort of uh, inf information out. Um, but then, just Recording more. in progress. Okay. All right, so he's still. So, um, Bishop Sanchez alluded to this earlier with uh, Pope Francis commenting on uh, our presidential election, uh, but I actually have some of the quotes or the translated quotes here. So, um, just paraphrasing, he, after he criticized uh, former President Trump over the plan to deport uh, millions of immigrants. He also criticized uh, Vice President Harris on her stance supporting abortion rights. But he said, uh, not voting is ugly. It's not good. You must vote. You must choose the lesser evil. Who is the lesser evil? That lady or that gentleman? I don't know. Everyone in conscience has to think and do this. So uh, in doing so, he's giving people permission to vote for either of them depending on where their faith takes them at least that that's how i see it um but in but the way that he's doing it is talking about reasons why your faith may lead you to not support either of them so uh many many years ago what when i would do these voter registration drives um there was almost always someone who would come up to me and accuse me of uh, doing something for whatever the other side was versus whatever they believed. So I had um, Republicans accuse me of doing something for the Democrats and Democrats accuse me of doing something for the Republicans. 
So what we, it, it, was, it wasn't just me. So it was something that we had all talked about and said, well, no, this is something where uh, if you're honest with yourself, uh, the uh, neither party lines up exactly with what it is that the Catholic Church approves and, and, and you know, preaches on. And it's just, you have to look, you know, look into your own faith and help have that guide you towards whatever decision that you make with, you know, with your priorities, what you're comfortable with. Um, and, and because it doesn't line up perfectly with either side, uh, that, that helps you to be both, um, not, I guess it, it, if, if, if there was one party that lined up completely with Catholic Church teachings, it would make it easier, you know, uh, at, at when it comes time to decide who to vote for, but it would make it more difficult to stay, uh, you know, neutral and nonpartisan. As a, so, you know, you, you, you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, ups and downs there. But yeah, these are the, the quotes that uh, I was just uh, mentioning. And then um, if uh, at the end I'll have my email address, so if anybody wants, uh, you know, some of these slides or whatever, I can send them to you afterwards. Oh, okay. I was going to do that. So um, the next, next thing, thing is it, so forming consciences uh, for faithful citizenship, which you have uh, in front of you um, parts of the, the document. So this is something that the uh, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops put out um, this year. So this is an updated version of something that they had put out uh, a while ago. And whereas what Pope Francis said was telling you why you shouldn't support necessarily um, somebody, this is telling you what it is you should be looking for to support. So just going to go over some of the, the highlights of that with the next few slides. So... Um, it says here, we urge our pastors, lay and religious faithful, and all people of goodwill to use this statement to help form their consciences, to teach those <laughs> entrusted to their care, to contribute to civil and respectful public dialogue, and to shape political choices in the coming election in light of Catholic teaching. So, um, and then they actually... Uh, talk about something with uh, with Pope Francis as well, where looking to the example of the Good Samaritan and, you know, how that parable summons us to rediscover our vocation as citizens of our respective nations and of the entire world, builders of a new social bond. Um, now, when you when you read that, you see, with, with the Good Samaritan, that in and of itself is an individual action. But the way that this is being um, used here is to just show that, it, no, this is beyond an individual action. This is if all of us are doing this sort of thing. It, it's something that, that impacts society and uh, impact you know, the, the greater good. So. So the role of the church in American political life. Um, so on this, you see, it's, you know, the church is the body of Christ who reigns as king over all creation. Everything, including political life, belongs to Jesus Christ. And so participation in political life belongs to the mission of the church. Our mandate is to go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Here, the creation refers to every aspect of human life. Nothing human can be alien to it. So, um, you know, if you're wondering, you know, how does how do, how do we reconcile something like uh, the church is everything in creation and to have, you know, a, a separation of church and state as has been the tradition in this country. It's a well, that tradition is a top down tradition. It doesn't it doesn't mean that, you know, the, the people can't push for what they what they believe to be, you know, true and good and, you know, that it's an issue advocacy. Um, so, because if you have it the other way around, where you're having religion from the government, that's that's a theocracy, and that 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 would never uh, line up. But actually, the role of government um, uh, is uh, is done a few slides after this in the subsidiarity section, which if you looked at the 
um, forming consciousness, uh, you'll see that that's there. So, and yes, I had to practice saying that multiple times because it's not a word you use every day. So, um, so yeah, so in this document, it's got uh, four principles um, and it, they preface it by saying it's not to tell the faithful for whom or against whom to vote, but instead to help them form their consciences uh, in accordance with God's truth as they approach this often challenging decision, which is very similar to what we came up with many years ago with the vote your faith. Um, but the four main principles are the, the dignity of the human person, the common good, solidarity, and subsidiarity. So with the dignity of the human person, um, it's it's about the issues I, you see uh, on the left there with abortion, euthanasia, immigration, racism, and violence. And uh, who do those, um, those issues affect? So with abortion, it's children in the womb, but also the mothers. So with euthanasia, elderly, ill, disabled, immigration, migrants and refugees, racism, something that has to be you know, overcome and protecting people against, violence, criminal justice reform, and reducing gun violence in, in general. So with that, it's it's not saying, you know, it's it's nothing specific as, you know, you know like, a, like a gun ban, but it's just, it's reducing gun violence in general. So it's just something, it, it, these are just all uh, issues that you're being encouraged to consider when you're deciding who to vote for. And again, they don't all line up. Now, the common good, the uh, sum total of societal conditions, which allow people either as groups or as individuals to reach their fulfillment more fully and more easily. So um, just skip to the uh, third one there. So. Every being has a right to life, a right to religious freedom, and a right to have access to, the, to those things required for human decency. So this is the USCCB's version of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but you know, with a uh, specifically Catholic perspective on there. And uh, uh, the question I had after reading it that way is, what do they mean by human decency? And uh, they do elaborate on that in there where it's saying, you have a, you know, a right to have a good job and access to health care. So just like the right to help yourself through things um, and not be oppressed that way. Solidarity, a firm and persevering determination to commit oneself to the good of all and of each individual because we are all really responsible for all. One human family, whatever our national, racial, ethnic, economic, and ideological differences. And uh, the person is social in nature. We develop and flourish within a community. As baptized members of the community of the church, we are part of one body in Christ, and we are also part of one global human family. I feel like that doesn't need to be explained, I don't think. But then uh, here is the more complicated one and not just in its pronunciation. So the principle of subsidiarity reminds us that larger institutions in society, such as the state or federal government, should not overwhelm or interfere with smaller or local institutions, such as the family, local schools, or the church community. So again, like how I said earlier with the whole, I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> with the uh, top-down uh, part um, where you, know, you don't basically, you, you, do, you don't want an oppressive government, but mm -hmm. larger institutions do have essential responsibilities when local institutions cannot adequately protect human dignity, meet human needs, meet human needs, excuse me, or advance the common good. So it's this is one of those things where it, everything's in a balance. So it's not saying that you know all government is bad, but you just have to be careful of you know uh, oppressive, intrusive uh, government. Uh, as this reflects the essential freedom and the innate human dignity of each person, 
while also recognizing the role higher authorities such as government can play to ensure that all people are able to thrive. So, you know, with government, you know, we do have police that can help protect people, but, you know, at the, the larger part, we have, you know, the, the army that protects us on, on that, on that uh, front. So, you know, th th this is, I think the more complicated of the, 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 the four principles, but they're all interrelated and they all use a lot of the same words, but they don't necessarily stress the same things. So that's just my interpretation of it. If you want a theological one, I think you can, you have a few people in here that you can also uh, talk to. Um, and then just uh, overview. So uh, nonpartisan versus bipartisan. So nonpartisan is, you know, in the sense that the church can't always uh, uh, favor one over the other or publicly or even, or even privately. But bipartisan is, well, when we do our lobbying for the church, we have to interact with Democrats and Republicans. And depending on where those issues line up um, is, you know, who, who we go to on that and, and who's in, in power. So, for example, um, uh, Senator uh, Chuck Schumer, we, we have to interact with him a lot on issues of immigration. So we have... Um, when we have uh, priests and seminarians from other countries who have visa issues, that's who helps. Um, when uh, when when there are uh, issues with uh, like the local community um, where they uh, the city wanted to open um, or was going to allow a, a marijuana dispensary to open near one of our Catholic schools, bless you. Uh, we. Uh, we were working with uh, Councilwoman Vicky Palladino um, out, out in, in Queens. So it it means, you know, when you're doing this and you're doing it the right way, you're going to have people that you know on both sides and th that, you know, can help you. And then you can you can help, like I said, the thing with uh, Congressman Jeffries. And, and you're not helping them to gain power. You're helping them to uh, do their uh, constituent services because one thing that every neighborhood has is a church. And they know that when it, when it comes to the Catholic church, uh, we, we, have, we have a database of, uh, you know, of every church and every school uh, in, in the diocese uh, by their addresses. And then we know who represents them at every level. And it's something that we have to update all the time because you know people resign, people lose elections, and then when they do redistricting, sometimes those borders change, and then and then somebody who was in one group is now in another. Mm -hmm. So so it is there's there's a lot that we need to um, keep keep in mind there. And uh, on that, just you know, it, it, you're looking at you know issues versus ideologies. So we we can't do our job if we're bogged down in ideology, but what we have, we do what we have to do, um, you know, if we're focusing on actual issues. <clears throat> Matthew, I got, I got approached by a, a woman who is the owner of a, uh, a restaurant one block from the church. And she said, how is it that I had to spend two years getting permission to serve liquor here, a block away from the church? And, uh, there is a marijuana shop across the street from the school. Now, that is a factor of the complexities that the city faced in rolling out the giving permission to marijuana sales. So, yes. Well, excuse me, were they licensed? That was what I was just going to. They shut their shut their down. Down. Because they were like, you're going to open up anywhere. Yeah. Well, if you're licensed, then you have to be within a certain. No, that's exactly what I was going was going to say. I don't know the the number of feet as the minimum distance, but there is there is one, and I think, you know, just a couple of years ago, we saw all these you know these uh, obvious dispensaries opening up everywhere across the city, and I was like, wow, this is this is really screwed up. They're letting so many of them open, and then it wasn't until what was it earlier this year. Where in the springtime, yeah, just clean them all up, and it was yeah. just like, oh, okay. And so I noticed. So I, I live in Manhattan. And I know some of them just completely gone. Others have 
like rebranded themselves into little convenience stores. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> which is yeah. well, I'm also to that. Yeah, yeah. But it's the local market now. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, so no, I but they were closed. Things, excuse me. No, the one across from the, the parking lot was, was gone, gone. but okay. there was another one down the block by right right the street there. towards um, continental. continental. Right, that one now is an organic market. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let's. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was during the spring where that came out that, oh, all, you know, they're actually most of the ones that opened and that are in, you know, problematic areas mm -hmm. never should have opened in the first place. And then they they were being, you know, raided and, and forced to shut down. So I remember, so uh, so I, I live uh, in Yorkville in uh, upper Manhattan, so the you know upper, upper east side. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember walk right after that happened, walking down First Avenue, and I noticed all of a sudden all of these stores were closed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of them had been authorized. Because mm -hmm. they've only issued, they have a dozen licenses, right. 15 licenses of the whole state, mm -hmm. you know, right. city, whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for whatever reason, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how nobody noticed because so many had opened up, and if it was just 15 right. for the whole state, it exactly. was just, right, right. <laughs> so, it's, also, it's also a question of the landlord allowing them to rent it. Right. right. So, yeah. yeah. I think, excuse me, I have the next mass. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank Bishop Sanchez for spearheading the Catholic social teaching and the young uh, Catholic professional group for uh, sponsoring this event today. We're happy for all of you that are here. Uh, certainly, we had hoped for many more, but obviously, you know, it's Sunday and, you know, Sunday is not what it used to be. You know, people have Costco and the basketball and all of this. Business. But uh, but hopefully, uh, after we're done editing this thing, uh, we'll be able to put it on, up on our uh, live stream and the, the people that are not here can access it. And I think the information is very. All right. Well, thank you so much. Please excuse me, everyone. But uh, Life goes on. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And you know what to do after everything. And if everybody can help Kevin with the chairs, you know, uh, just put everything away. Uh, yep. Did I show you where the rack is? I'm sorry. Yes. So um, let me just move this to. I think it's going to post it to the. Well, well, I, I mean, I, I gave it to, yeah. the, so they, they, ha they have it, they but have um, it. We're, actually, it. we're actually going to put the presentation on live stream. Okay. Our, 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 I, think our, the, um, I think that the, the paper, the slide, the slideshow, if yes. it could be sent out to others, yes. that'd be useful as well. Okay. So if yeah. well, I have my email address on here, so if any, if you want to write that down um, at the salesmedia.org. Okay. Uh, so if you need something, you know, directly, I I I don't mind uh you know just, just send me a message. Yeah, so that. you could send us this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there were uh two handouts here. So one of them was the uh the forming conscience as right. uh faithful citizenship. The other is the single page one where um it has a bunch of QR codes. Yeah. So I don't know. For the videos, right? Yes, there the videos, and I think there's a way to sign up. Um, so, yeah, for more information, yeah. So uh, it says on the bottom there, uh, so yeah, they're here, but they're also in the vestibule in the actual church. So, um, of course. Uh, uh, well, so does anyone else have any other questions or? Yes. Well, Matthew, thank you very much. Huh? Yes. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Thanks, well, thank you for listening. Yeah.